Greetings and hello to all of you from all of us in the Catholic Grandparents Association. My name is Catherine Wiley and I'm delighted to be with you all today as part of this Joy of Love and Family conference series. It is really a most welcome initiative as we celebrate Pope Francis's Amoris Laetitia family year. And I'm so grateful to the Diocese of Metuchen and the other five dioceses in the states of New Jersey for this very kind invitation. I would dearly love to be with you all in person, but that has not been possible this time. I wish you a fruitful and blessed conference series. I'm looking forward to tuning in to so many of the other speakers. I'm sure you will have many questions for me, which I sadly can't be there to answer. So please get in touch with me at my any stage by email and I'll be more than happy to respond or to help. It really is an honor for me to be with you as we pre prepare for the celebration of the first ever World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly, which is a gift to families, especially grandparents and elders, and to the whole church from our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We look forward very much to being part of the celebrations later this month. Speaking of the World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly, I was particularly struck by the theme chosen by Pope Francis for the first World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly. I am with you always, a phrase from Matthew. In introducing this theme last month, we were offered the following explanation. I am with you always is a promise of closeness and hope that young and old can mutually share. Not only are grandchildren and young people called upon to be present in the lives of older people, but older people and grandparents also have a mission of evangelization, proclamation and prayer, and of encouraging young people in their faith. That explanation and the theme itself immediately resonated with me, both as a grandmother and as the founder of the Catholic Grandparents Association. Our own mission in the Catholic Grandparents Association is to pass on the faith and to keep prayer at the heart of family life. I am with you always perfectly captures that mission statement. In fact, if we were to pick a phrase to describe the role of grandparents in the lives of their families, especially their grandchildren, it would be, I am with you always. If you really think about that phrase and unpack it a little bit, what do you find? Well, we are there with our grandchildren before they are born. We dream about grandchildren as soon as our own children fly the nest and get married. We can be a little bit mischievous at times, dropping hints about how adorable grandchildren are, asking if there is any news. Any of you family with these, any of you familiar with the social media sites, YouTube and TikTok, will know just how viral the many you are going to be a grandparent videos are. A simple introduction to a future grandchild gets views in the millions. Why? Because it is a momentous and joyful, almost foundational occasion in the life of a family. It's the next generation being nurtured with joy into our world. I am with you always. We are there, as I said, before our grandchildren are born, and often just as they arrive into the world, often as the very first people to introduce to them after they are born, to touch and to hold. We are there for them for as many days as we can be after they are born. We are there with them through teethers as toddlers, for the terrible twos and threes, and on their first day of school. We're there for the tweeny years and for the teenage years. Even those years are a distant memory for me. I still shudder when I think of them. We are there as they graduate from high school, pass out of college and into their jobs and careers. We're there for holidays, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas and for birthdays. We are also there for all the sacramental moments, their baptism, first penance, first holy communion, confirmation, marriage, our holy orders. We are there with our grandchildren when they are sick. Sadly, we are often the ones to hold the family together after the death of a child or of a parent. We are there for the good days and the not so good days, for the moments of joy and the moments of sadness. We are always there. We are often there to act as a safety valve to release tension during times of family stress. We're very often a safe house for a few hours escape from parents or an argument with friends or a partner. We're there with a cup of tea, a hug, a pat on the hand, a walk in silence 
as we wait for them to unload what's bothering them. We are with them always. And even after we have passed on from this world, we will still be with them in their memories, in gifts and advice passed on, in mannerisms, looks, traits, temperament, and hopefully in their faith. And it is in our faith where the real understanding of that scripture phrase, I am with you always, resonates most profoundly. Jesus told us that he will be with us always. As grandparents struggling in this ever-changing world, we really need to remind ourselves of that fact. No matter what is happening in our lives, in our families, in our world, Jesus is with us. God is with us. Much of what we do in the Catholic Grandparents Association comes from my own personal faith and my belief that grandparents and the elderly have an important role in families, in parishes, at national level, in the church and in society. I was delighted to see a whole section of this conference totally dedicated to the golden years. My husband Stuart, who is a convert of the Catholic faith, and I have been married for over 50 years. We have four children and 10 grandchildren who, despite being brought up carefully in the Catholic faith, yet sadly have drifted away from the faith. We have divorce and addiction in our family. Some of my own grandchildren have not been baptized. So like many of you here today, we are no strangers to the difficulties, the heartaches and the challenges of modern day Catholic family life. So I'm here speaking to you as an elderly Irish grandmother, but I feel I have to tell you that I don't feel elderly and I'm not sure I ever think of myself as living in the golden years of life. My grandchildren keep me young and they tell me that I don't look elderly and that I certainly don't act elderly, God forbid. In fact, at 74, I would say that I am blessed to be in the prime of my life. And I think a lot of grandparents feel the same. For those of you who don't know much about our association, I would like to share with you just some of the genesis of it. It was on Our Lady's birthday, September the 8th, nearly 20 years ago, I was praying before a statue of Our Lady in Walsingham at the Marian Shrine in England. And as my mind wandered, I was considering what I could possibly give Our Lady for a birthday present. Have you ever thought of that? What would truly delight her? A cake? a new dress, what could you give our Holy Mother who had given us everything? Almost immediately my question was answered. It came to me that in this tiny village where faithful pilgrims had journeyed for centuries, a pilgrimage to honor her mother and father, Saint Joachim and Saint Anne, the grandparents of her divine son Jesus, would truly delight her and honor and thank her and all of our grandparents, alive and dead, who had done so much for us, particularly in transmitting our beloved faith. So with great fear and trepidation, totally out of my comfort zone, guided and led by the Holy Spirit, I suppose you could call it an impulse of faith. We organized the first ever grandparents pilgrimage in the world. With the blessing of our patron, Archbishop Neri of Tume in the west of Ireland and endorsed by the Vatican, we have now grown into a private association of the faithful with ministries and members in over 60 countries. I believe that we were amongst the first, if not the very first, to shine a light on the vocation of grandparents in the church itself and their vital and critical contribution to the church, the family and to society. It's hardly surprising that the Catholic Grandparents Association has grown so quickly you who are grandparents understand instinctively the great human, moral and spiritual challenges facing our children today in the world in which they are growing up. It feels to me now, after so many years of the CGA and its work, and after much reflection and listening, that our Holy Mother was calling on us grandparents, who have been tried and tested in the faith, to rebuild her church. We in the Catholic Grandparents Association strive for opportunities for our children and grandchildren to be brought up in a modern and inclusive Catholic faith, whoever and whatever they are, surrounded and supported their whole lives as we have been, through the love of Jesus Christ and of our Holy Mother Church.
Many grandparents that I know of my age are multitasking, playing an indispensable role in helping their children to bring up their grandchildren, while sometimes also looking after or caring for their own ageing parents, which we all know can be both gratifying and very stressful. Many of us are still holding down a job and many older people are contributing to the community and to our parishes, as I say, keeping our church doors open. In fact, many of our older people are running our parishes these days. Look at Pope Francis and the Queen of England. One is 84 and one is 95, and they're still doing fantastic work. One is still running the church in his 80s, and the other is still sorting out serious family crises in her 95th year, and showing everyone the meaning of duty. Pope Francis said, there is a true vocation, a mission for older people who have a lot more free time now at their disposal than before. While that is the case for many, I sometimes struggle to find that free time. I'm sure many of you in your golden years know exactly what I mean. Since the beginning of his papacy, Pope Francis has constantly reminded us of the gifts that grandparents and the elderly have to offer. And yet at times, they seem to be ignored. We need to listen and to help him in any way we can. We need to help grandparents to recognise their vocation, which is to pass on their faith to future generations and to keep prayer at the heart of family life. This is the mission statement of the Catholic Grandparents Association. This is our only purpose and the very reason that we exist. <clears throat> in recent times, we all know the faith has been waning in the younger generation. And it's hardly surprising when they have grown up in an era hearing only negativity about our church. They have completely missed out on the total beauty of the gospel. In these circumstances, it is essential that we grandparents make them feel utterly included and that we recognise the beauty of our faith, which has sustained it through all the ups and downs of our lives. You know, society often projects negative images of older people, whereas youth are depicted at the best stage of life. Old age is often shown as the worst, when in reality we have much in common. We are dependent on each other in one way or the other, from the cradle to the grave. Life goes full circle, as shown in this little poem, entitled The Little Boy and the Old Man, by Shelves Silverstein. Said the little boy to the old man, Sometimes I drop my spoon. Said the little old man, I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do that too, laughed the old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded. So do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay any attention to me. And he felt the warmth of a wrinkled old hand. I know what you mean, said the little old man. Isn't that just a really striking image depicted in that poem? There is no greater blessing in life than to care for those who have cared for you, to be there for them in person, in every way, at every stage. We all age in different ways. Many of us require part-time or even full-time care, either at home or in independent living, or in a care home, where we may need care physically, medically, emotionally and spiritually. How are we going to achieve this? Who is going to do it when we are not around? The next crop of grandparents? We need to develop strong parish structures to know who they are and to help meet their needs. They need to know that they are loved, needed and wanted for who they are and not for what they are. We need to be sure that they, that they remain valued members of the community. It is our sacred responsibility to make provision for all their needs. Saint Mother Teresa said, the most terrible poverty is loneliness and the feeling of being unloved. Visiting them and ensuring they receive the sacraments is of paramount importance. No medical care will cure their spiritual ills. Only our loving God can heal. And time is critical. We need to do something now to make sure no one is neglected. The opportunity presents itself now in this blessed and timely conference to share thoughts and ideas, ways and means that will truly make a difference in our families, our church and our communities and highlight how we influence our families, particularly when they get older and are need and are in need. 
The vocation and value of grandparents was simply but profoundly expressed in the Universal Prayer for Grandparents composed in 2008 at our request by Pope Emeritus Benedict. This powerful, insightful prayer encapsulates a fitting and accurate description of both the attributes, the gifts and the needs of our elderly and our grandparents and I think perfectly articulates the essence of this gathering and the upcoming World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly and our mission statement. I would like to share this prayer with all of you as it is so beautiful and in fact started the Catholic Grandparents Association. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary, the daughter of Saint Joachim and Saint Anne. Look with love on grandparents the world over. Protect them. They are a source of enrichment for families, for the church and for all of society. Support them as they grow older. May they continue to be for their families, strong pillars of gospel faith, guardians of noble domestic ideals, living treasuries of sound religious traditions. Make them teachers of wisdom and courage that they may pass on to future generations the fruits of their mature human and spiritual experience. Lord Jesus, help families and society to value the presence and roles of grandparents. May they never be ignored or excluded, but always encounter respect and love. Help them to live serenely and to feel welcomed in all the years of life which you give them. Mary, mother of all the living, keep grandparents constantly in your care, accompany them on their earthly pilgrimage, and by your prayers, grant that all families may one day be reunited in our heavenly homeland where you await all humanity for the great embrace of life without end. Amen. That really says it all, doesn't it? This prayer has been translated into 25 languages and into Braille. Please pray it every day. This grace-filled prayer needs to hang in every church so that grandparents and the elderly feel welcomed, recognised, honoured and prayed for by all generations. I believe that as a church we need to better recognise the valuable resources we have in our elderly who often feel disenfranchised. As a church we need to provide more opportunities for continued spiritual growth and an enhanced prayer life recognising the contributions, wisdom and experience of our elderly population. I myself have gone back to school this year to study a course in catechetics. It has been the most wonderful, grace-filled time for me. Each Thursday I have logged in via Zoom, with the help of my grandson, for the class with 150 other people from across the UK, Ireland and some farther afield. We have six modules of six classes and yes there is an exam at the end or an assessment. It has totally enriched my own life and moved me a little bit further along on my own faith journey but it has also inspired me to seek ways to offer more formation and catechesis to grandparents. They need to have their faith nurtured and supported. They need help to be able to catechise others especially in this complicated world we live in. Imagine if one of the fruits of the World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly was that dioceses across the world took on board the faith formation needs of grandparents and the elderly and offered them catechesis, shaped and styled to suit their needs. How empowering would that be? How enriching would that be? Imagine if one of the fruits of this conference series would be a recognition that grandparents and the elderly are thirsting for more events and catechesis like this. How much it would help them to continue to engage with the next generations, the next crop of grandparents. Pope Francis has often referred to old age as a season of dialogue because it presupposes a dialogue and an encounter between the elderly and the young in order to build a society that is more just, more beautiful, more supportive and more Christian. 
Open dialogue and communication within our families is crucial. The elderly are the keepers of our memories. They are great storytellers. And we have the greatest story ever told. So keep on telling it. A famous Jewish rabbi was asked how the Jewish nation kept the faith during the Holocaust. He replied, they never forgot to tell the story. I read a really interesting quote from Catholic writer and speaker Matthew Kelly some years ago. He said, every single day, the Catholic Church feeds, houses and clothes more people, takes care of more sick people, visits more prisoners and educates more people than any other institution on the face of the earth could ever hope to. The very essence of healthcare and caring for the sick emerged through the church, through the religious orders, in direct response to the value and dignity that the gospel assigns to each and every human life. Prior to the church's introduction of education for the common man, education was reserved only for the nobility. Almost the entire Western world is educated today because of the church's pioneering role in universal education. What an extraordinary set of stats this is. And yet we're reluctant to shout something like this from the rooftops, to display it on billboards, or even to tell it to our children and grandchildren. The passing on of faith is a legacy issue as well as something current and lived out. It's about accompaniment and helping young people to discover and discern their faith. We need to accompany our young people to places of spiritual significance, to churches and shrines, to the places of their own baptism, to cemeteries to remember the generations who came before us who have passed on their great gift of faith, their only lasting legacy. Last year, I took two of my teenage grandchildren to visit my young sister who was dying. They kissed her goodbye in her hospital bed. It was very emotional and very sad as they joined the family gathered around her bed praying the rosary. I don't think they'd ever encountered such reverence or heard the rosary prayed. This was their first experience of the death of a loved one. I was very glad that they were with me to witness the truth and the beauty of our death in faith, the dignity and the love. Young people don't like to talk about death. As a matter of fact, no one does. But as our Holy Father says, we must reconcile ourselves to death. We must prepare for it and ensure that our families are aware of our wishes and that we are well informed about end of life issues and our church's teachings. The elderly and our young people need places where they can encounter each other. But in order for this to happen, grandparents need to be offered the same level of catechesis and faith enrichment that young people receive in order for us to keep pace with them. Our parishes need us, support us, and to keep on teaching us. The Catholic Grandparents Association have, through our ministries worldwide, initiated both practical, spiritual, and social resources and activities to benefit parish life in our communities. We have pioneered and introduced grandparents' pilgrimages, Thanksgiving masses for grandparents and the elderly, grandparents' days in schools, children's prayer appeals, adopt a prayer child. We have promulgated Pope Benedict's prayer for grandparents, which has spread to many countries. We have initiated the celebration of Bambanelli Sunday, brought it back. We have offered catechetical materials, seminars, retreats, monthly grandparents' newsletters, monthly ministry meetings with relevant topics. And we have also encouraged the reviving of old traditions and the creating of new ones. We have coined the first medal of St. Joachim and St. Anne with their beloved grandson, Jesus. Okay. These are the practical and tangible elements of the ministry of the Catholic Grandparents Association. And they are important to us, to all of us, in bringing people to us and with us. I can't speak to you today without addressing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on grandparents and the elderly. Of course, the pandemic has, has impacted all of us. We know that much of our ministries as church moved online or had to be paused. The faith scaffolding that so many grandparents rely on disappeared. At the height of the pandemic, so much of our meeting up ministries were paused. 
we received countless emails from grandparents feeling scared, feeling lost and feeling utter despair. Even now, as we come out the other side, there is a nervousness there amongst grandparents and the elderly about getting back out into the real world. We also have to come to terms with the countless thousands of grandparents who succumbed to the virus. We are a generation that has been decimated by the COVID-19 pandemic. There is delayed and paused grieving in so many families as they were unable to give their elders a proper goodbye or a funeral or closure. But within the darkness of the daily numbers of those who had been diagnosed with or died from COVID-19, there have also been great stories of hope and recovery. The stories of elderly couples separated due to the pandemic, being reunited with each other after a year. The elderly person getting home after months in hospital battling COVID and its side effects. The elderly grandparent and veteran in the United Kingdom who raised millions for the National Health Service charity with his daily garden walking. The charity story went viral. But perhaps the most wonderful scenes in the past few weeks have been those of grandchildren rushing into the arms of grandparents they have not been able to see or hug for six months or more. Every single one of these viral videos caught me right in the heart. Who knew this time two years ago that hugs and touching and kisses would become the most sought after commodity in our world? Isn't that perhaps a welcome side effect of the pandemic? Closer to home in the CGA, we too initially wondered what might happen when our pilgrimages and gatherings were cancelled. How could we continue to support and encourage grandparents? Prayer has been and always will be at the centre of what we do as the CGA. So we offered masses at the shrines in Knock and Walsingham and placed all the grandparents and elderly in the palm of the hands of Our Lady. We also stayed in touch with people by social media, posting daily, uplifting social media posts to encourage people in their role as grandparents and to support them in their faith. Then we wondered how we might encourage some face-to-face -face virtual engagement. And one of our new board members, who's not even a grandparent yet, came up with the idea of a grandparents' faith cafe, where we would meet virtually in a cafe-style environment, complete with our cup of tea or coffee, and just chat about life and take a look at the role of grandparents through the lens of faith. We had our first faith cafe online via Zoom last December, and honestly, it has been one of our greatest successes. People came in there doesn't, clicked online on the second Tuesday of the month just to be with other grandparents to have a chat. Chat about a topic and to share some of the joys and challenges of being a grandparent and how they were coping with COVID. We've been joined by a guest speaker each month and have heard wonderful, prayerful, personal reflections from our grandparents. People have laughed, cried, been uplifted and encouraged. Initially, we thought that the Faith Cafe would be temporary while we were dealing with the COVID restrictions. But last month's cafe showed me just why we have to keep going. We were joined by our speaker from the East End of London, by Ron and Mavis, who were just yards from the Pacific Ocean in Sydney, Australia. Then Lauren was just metres from Niagara Falls in upstate New York. And Marilyn, our International Ministry Coordinator, was in Texas. And we had people from all over Ireland. It was observing this spread of people and places that firmed up my belief that we need to keep our international faith cafe open for chats, even when we can have our meetings and, and ministries up again. The depth of knowledge and interaction across the globe has just been inspirational and sometimes quite unique. The themes we discuss and reflect on at the Faith Cafe are also very thought-provoking and some of them are worth reflection on as the wider church. Grandparents as influencers, grandparents as agents of grace are two themes that really struck a chord with me. Influencers is a word that has become associated with viral followings on social media. I think that grandparents were the very first influencers in the lives of their children and grandchildren. Grandparents are also very much agents of grace 
in the lives of their families. They are often the custodians of the sacramental moments in the family, gently guiding and nurturing their children into marriage, and then all the sacramental moments that follow with their grandchildren. This is why catechesis for grandparents is so important and has to be something that is formalised by the church. The Grandparents Faith Cafe that was conceived during COVID is here to stay. I'm happy to tell you that. It is something really positive in the life of the CGA and maybe we can encourage some of you to join us for a future one and maybe even persuade one or two of the other excellent speakers in this conference series to be our guest speakers in the future. Grandparents, through their years of experience in the family, have navigated all of life's difficulties. We are there through the sad and the happy times in the family. We offer support and understanding to single parents having to raise children. When there is the misery of divorce and the breakup of the family, job losses, family struggling with addiction, mental illness, miscarriage, grandparents are the anchor. We keep on caring and helping, even when our family situations may not be what we would have wanted. Grandparents never stop loving and supporting their family. When challenging situations arise, like a marriage breakdown, addiction, or someone struggling with gender or sexuality, you are there as that anchor to reach out and to hold them more closely because in those moments, they need more love than ever before. It can be very difficult to be a grandparent of integrity in these unbelievably complex situations. We don't have extensive training or experience and many of these new situations were never discussed in our generation. So of course we have little experience on how to respond. But when our grandchildren and children hurt, we hurt twice as much. These are the very opportunities that enable grandparents and the elderly to be Jesus to their families. When we feel helpless and hopeless, we turn to God. We turn to prayer. That is what I have always done throughout my life, pray. And God has never failed to guide, console and uplift me. We pass on our faith by our example through mercy, forgiveness and love, just like Jesus taught us. We have to face these challenges with integrity and faith. Grandparents, this is your time. You are being called. This is your job and nobody else can do it as well as you. We have to be Jesus in the family. We have to give them hope. Without the understanding, wisdom, tolerance, compassion and unconditional love of the elders in our family, we would be lost. My advice and my own personal experience as an elderly grandmother is to always meet them where they are. You will always love them, tell them that. Make sure the door is always open. And take care of yourselves too. Love one another, cherish one another while you still have each other. Tell your spouse you love him and pray for him. There is no greater example of the fruits of a long life full of blessings to a family than an elderly loving couple who have stayed together through thick and thin through their love and the love of Jesus Christ. It's lovely to see older people holding hands or exchanging a kiss. Our grandchildren laugh and call it old love. That dialogue and encounter between the elderly and the young, in order to build a society that is more just, more beautiful, more supportive, more Christian. And as for that old love, well, I prefer to think of it as offering a masterclass in marriage to the next generations. We know around, around the world that the levels of uptake of sacramental marriage are in decline in many countries. The church wrestles with how to promote sacramental marriage. The church also wrestles with language when it comes to trying to encourage young people into marriage preparation classes. I think a master class in marriage sounds far more appealing than a pre-marriage course. I think grandparents, you together in your relationships of 30, 40, 50 years are a living masterclass in marriage, an old love to the new generations. You are also the very best witness when it comes to the meaning of sacramental marriage. Don't ever forget that.
you are the witnesses. Bishop John Hine of England told a very touching story at one of our pilgrimages. He said, when his elderly grandmother was dying, sitting beside her bed, holding her hand, she looked at him and said, John, do you know that I have prayed for you every day of my life? He said he was moved to tears, and so was I. Who has prayed for you every day of your life? Ask yourself the question. Who have you prayed for every day of your life? Let your children and your grandchildren know that you are praying for them. Whatever you do, teach them to pray. Wherever and whenever you can, teach them. I want to share a story about the teaching of prayer and showing rather than just telling the story. My granddaughter Annie and I were on a flight that was having the most terrible turbulence. She was 11. She had never experienced anything like it before. Nothing would console her. She was literally inconsolable, crying, tears, all my attempts and offers to help from the cabin crew, nothing. Nothing was working. So I leaned over and whispered into her ear and asked her if she remembered the prayer I had taught her when we were together, Angel of God, my guardian dear. She nodded her little head and launched into Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this night be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. I'll never forget that moment, ever. It was the moment when my granddaughter Annie had her first experience of Jesus. That began her life with Jesus, that little prayer. My generation, this generation of elderly, not only have the opportunity to change things for the next generation, we are the opportunity. Our challenge is to work together as church, never forgetting that we are the lifeblood of the family and the lifeblood of the church. We are the past, the present and the future, and we are up to the challenge for this new mission. A ministry for grandparents and the elderly in parishes is absolutely essential. This vital ministry can be a powerful resource within the parish, a place where grandparents are encouraged to share their gifts and talents and to build up the kingdom of God in our families and in our church, and above all, to pray together. Grandparents' prayers and the prayers of the elderly are very, very powerful. With Ministries for the Elderly and Grandparents in the Parish, utilising all the treasures and gifts they have to offer, working together as one, all ages and stages, we will not fail. In fact, failure in this case is simply not an option. Pope Francis said, where there is no honour towards the elderly, there is no future for the young. Finally, and most importantly, it was the Catholic Grandparents Association who begged, who begged our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to proclaim a World Day of Prayer for grandparents and the elderly and the church. It is a dream come true that this celebration has now been instituted into the Universal Church on the Sunday closest to the feast day of St. Joachim and St. Anne, our heavenly patrons. This World Day will, un will unite us all in prayer and love grandparents, parents, grandchildren, and all the generations to come. This is going to be our legacy, acknowledging the richness, blessing, and thanksgiving for a full life. We thank God for our vocation, for our many blessings, and the richness of many years of life. Our resources for the World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly are there for you. They include posters, flyers, prayers, Plant a tree in their memory is very special. The passing on of the Faith podcast and lots of other ideas, so please download them and share them. Just drop on to our website, catholicgrandparentsassociation.org. So before I conclude, before I say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with you today, I have three requests to make of you as the church in this part of the world. I would like to ask you the following. That the church would, in whatever way it can, turn to the grandparents and the elderly and say, I am with you always. Pope Francis is doing this by the World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly. So please embrace this day. Number two, that you continue to grow and establish unique ministries and opportunities for grandparents and the elderly in all parishes. 
and three, that you offer catechesis and faith formation for grandparents to give them the tools to update and refresh their faith. And I want to conclude by thanking you all for listening. We've all had to get used to this virtual world, which can at times be impersonal, which can and has borne many fruits. And here we are today. I thank all of you for listening. And we pray that the fruits of this blessed conference will shed a new light on the living treasuries we have right here in our midst. And we pray for the people who cannot be with us today. And for those we have lost to the pandemic, might we also pray for all those of my generation who have maybe lost their confidence as a result of the cocooning during the pandemic, and to pray that younger people will always be patient with the older generations. May the blessings of St. Joachim and St. Anne, the parents of Mary, the grandparents of Jesus, be with you and your families today and always. God bless you all again and thank you so much for inviting me to be with you today on this glorious day.